guys, I did it, I did it. I managed to break away from rainy, horrible Britain and I found myself in Valencia for Triumph's global launch of the Speed 400 and the Scrambler 400X. Now in this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on riding and reviewing the Scrambler 400X. We're gonna do a little bit of on-road and off-road so if you're interested to find out what I think about this bike then keep watching because this video is going to be right up your street. Right, let's go baby! Can you reach the ground? What? Can you reach the ground That's not too bad. You reach the ground? Let's go. Well guys and girls, today it is the launch of the Scrambler 400X and Speed 400. Now this video is going to be a dedicated Scrambler 400X video. So if this is the bike you want to know about, then keep watching. So guys, we just have to get out of the city again. We always start from these fancy spendangly hotels. We've always got to escape. So apparently the first bit of riding's not very sexy, but I do really like to just capture going through the built up areas. Look at all the orange trees. Oh, okay. A little bit of grunt, bit of grunt. <laughs> We've got DT in front. Dan beeping his horn, beep beep. So, first impressions, look at this bike. We have a 400 little ripper, single cylinder, liquid cooled, producing 40 PS, which in real term is 39.5 brake horsepower and it also produces 37.5 newton meters of torque now peak power is found at 8000 rpm peak torque is found at six and a half thousand rpm but 80 percent of this torque is accessible from round about 3000 revs so it's got it on demand and we love that seat height 835 mil on the scrambler as you can see we've got a few with us in front on the speeds but i've started the day on the scram so these guys i mean that bike is oh no pigeon go away ah. this bike is significantly taller than the speed it definitely feels pokey punchy He's wild. It's like wacky races. Chaos, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We made it. Well, guys, that's crossing a five lane roundabout. What the heck are they heck? First little stretch of kind of faster paced roads. We're currently doing 50 miles an hour. Fifth gear, knock it into sixth. So this is a very pleasant cruising speed. The bike's got plenty more to give, obviously. So far I'd say vibrations are pretty minimal, but I have just jumped on the thing. 
but Triumph do claim that they have a counterbalancer shaft in this engine to really help dampen abnormal, well, normal for a single, vibrations. Yeah, acceleration then to get around that car and back with the lead rider and Alex. Absolutely fine, plenty of pulling power. Overtaking power. We have just had a bit of a coffee stop and we're on some twisty mountain roads. Now we've been advised that it gets pretty slippy in the shade on the floor so we're trying to be, be careful. But I thought I'd just put my camera on because this uh, kind of riding reveals a lot about this scrambler in itself. So the bike feels fun, it feels peppy, it feels flickable, like the steering input, you just don't need much of it to make it change direction. And I really like that about these bikes, they have that big bike feel appeal, but also a very manageable, you know, pretty light. I mean, I've been pushing them around, no bother. And uh, after my latest episodes off-road, you guys know how unfit I am. So it says a lot. <laughs> One of the things that's pretty cool about the bike is how much you can push the higher gears when you're going slow. Like how much you can test them. So you can literally be in fifth gear like I am now and you know be taking junctions going on to roundabouts being proper slow and it just laps it up just deals with it i do love these kind of mountainous roads riding position of the scrambler is real nice You've got quite an upright bar position. The bars on these are much wider than on the speed. You've got some adjustability with these bars as well. But yeah, the riding triangle, the ergonomics of it is real nice. So we're in fourth gear, just pop, 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 pottering along. So we're going to see now if the scrambler has enough poke and pull for some fun twisties. So with this bike of course we have a 19 inch front. So it's a bit of a do all wheel size if you ask me. You know it can take on a little bit of green lineage. It can do the road stuff pretty niftily as well. We've got some Metzler Carews on this. I want to say Carew Street. So we've got some Metzler on here. So if we're talking about some stuff that the bike has, suspension wise, at the front we have 43mm upside down forks. They are non-adjustable. We have a monoshock on the rear not twin shocks and the monoshock has the same amount of travel that is preload adjustable so if you're taking a pillion you can just adjust it and tweak it there well at 
fourth gear then around that real tight bend no chugging no huffing and puffing no argy bargy just dealt with it I like that it can almost it almost gives you a bit of a lazy ride if you want it like don't get me wrong you can make it as engaging and as exciting as you want with that right hand but if you're just having a bit of a chill and you're in your own world not that you should be you should pay attention at all times but if you do happen to daydream a little bit and you're in a very high gear for the speed you go in it's all right it just chugs away chugs away nicely so far it's handling feels pretty bob on to be honest i quite like the wide bars wide tall bars because you've got some nice leverage when you come up to the bends wow look at this place look fourth gear trundling through the town we're doing like 25 mile an hour it's not angry, it's not stroppy, it's just lapping it up. Kept it in, in fourth gear, even though we slowed right down to about 20 then. So we're still in fourth gear. Now we've had to drop down now because we've got a red light. Look to the right as we go over the bridge. Giant squirrel on the wall. There's a what? There's a giant squirrel on the wall. Squirrel? Squirrel. A real one? Yeah, a massive giant squirrel. Wow. So he's just said if we look to the right, there's going to be a massive squirrel on the wall but where am I looking? Oh, over the bridge he said over the Ah, oh, a proper squirrel not a real one what the heck I was like is it in a cage like what's it doing fifth gear float I'll probably drop it down to have some fun it round oh gorgeous and they're fanning around in sixth gear which it was doing fine but we want we want to pick its feet up we want a bit of fun a bit of fun in the sun so we're still in four drop it to third for a bit of a bit of guttage Lovely. In the shadows a little bit. Not particularly ideal, but here we are. Oh, it's clear for days. Clear for days. Oh, look at this. Do you know what? There's something deeply engaging and fun about revving a 400 and getting it to move fourth gear there we're on a hill pick up fine it can be sprightly where it wants to you know i'm not also angry at the wheel size 19 inches brilliant i think triumph identify that most of the people that are going to buy the scrambler are probably going to be more about the visuals of how a scrambler looks as opposed to actually scrambling hence why they've gone for like a cast alloy wheel as opposed to spokes that you generally find on off-road bikes one they can make them lighter two they're easier to clean and three, to keep the price of the bike lower than what it would be. Now, don't get me wrong, I think I'm pretty sure there'll be aftermarket companies like Rally Raid that'll probably do spokes for them. 
but it's not something that Triumph have any intentions of doing, you know. Got a nice van to pick up. Oh, the views are spectacular. You can get through here. So for those of you guys that were asking about overtaking power, he's got it, he's got it. I mean, I know I'm fairly light, lighter than your average rider, but these men in front are hustling around and showing that we've got Alex in front who's six foot three. He's currently on the speed 400. So as you can see, he doesn't look wholly ridiculous. I mean, he looks a little bit ridiculous because he's Alex. love roads like this look at this flippity flappity don't stop it oh yeah boy oh. So yeah, the Scrambler has an off-road mode, which we'll be riding around on a bit of shale later. Now, try and say we ain't doing anything hard because they don't really see their target audience doing any hardcore off-road. And to be honest, it isn't really the bike for that. To me, it's predominantly a road bike with a little bit of Scrambler-esqueness about it. Bit of visuals, bit of hipster vibes. I mean, you put a front tall mudguard on this, and it looks mint, like visually, it's up my street. Woohoo! Oh, I scraped the peg, ah! So far it's showing that it handles the twisties beautifully with you know standard rubber that is on it, the Karoos, that'll be quite a nice test for when I can get one of these back in the UK because you guys know it always rains there. Oh, gorge, gorge, gorge. The roads are something else here. I love days like this. We're on something fun. Again, from my perspective, on a launch, lots of photo stops, lots of stopping and starting. It's nice to have bikes that are light for me to just move with ease. That's the thing, like I'll move anything, I'll just deal with it when I used to sell BMWs. Sometimes I'd have to get the K1600s out on the front on my own. And that was fine, I did it. Was I tired at the end of it? Yes. Was it wholly practical? Would I like to move a K1600 in and out of my driveway if I wasn't being paid every single day? Absolutely not. Because it's just a, an added risk factor for me. I am a weed. But it's doable. So I'm not saying that you know, we can't, as smaller people and you know, slightly weedier people with not as much strength, we can't move these things, we can, but w w why? Like, I don't have to, I'm on a, a launch with very easy bikes to move and I love it because it makes my life easier and I'm not as tired by moving things, which is great. And I suppose in real world translation and application, same with, you know, getting the bike out your garage every morning for a commute, it's light, it's easy to push. Again, from a seat height perspective, you know, this is a, an 835 mil seat height, but it does have quite a skinny body. So it's, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're short, it will still feel a bit tall, but it's lightness kind of compensates for that. <laughs> I love using all the road. It's wonderful. 
Wow, views, views on views. Thank you, Triumph. Brakes can't complain. So obviously built to a price and with lighter bikes sometimes, you know, it, it is nice to have twin discs, but at least we don't run the risk of it being overbraked. That's for sure. Bellissimo! So good. Them roads. They're just something else. Now, you said that that girl said it's like dancing with the bike. I see what she was saying. Here they come. I said to them, just ride it your own. Yeah. So amazing! <laughs> yeah, so sorry. We were talking about brakes, weren't we? When we pulled up. <laughs> and then I got carried away with, wow, that was awesome. Right, so the brakes, single disc at the front. At least we don't run the risk of it being overbraked. The brakes work nicely. Even though we have a 320 mil disc on this 19 inch wheel, we do have a four piston caliper by Bybury, which is a kind of like a subsidiary brand of Brembo. Of course, it wouldn't make sense to put Brembo's on it because that would drive up the price. But this brand, this like sister brand, has kind of been developed for the smaller bike market that kind of doesn't require as expensive brakes, but can produce brakes that, you know, will do the job to the expectation of the end user. So I have no complaints with this brake at all. So suspension on this, it's always quite difficult for my opinion to have any weight because I'm not the mass average riding weight or rider weight. I'm about nine stone, I fluctuate nine stone, nine, nine and a half stone, depending on whether it's Christmas or not. <laughs> and I don't find the bike getting bent out of shape on those roads then when we were pushing a bit. The suspension just kind of lapped it up to the point where I didn't even think about it and I think that's a sign of good stock suspension when you're not consciously aware of it if you're not consciously aware of it it's not causing you any problems then I'm not consciously aware of it because it's just handling what I'm doing so I'm not thinking oh this is a bit soft oh this is a bit firm for my weight definitely and do you know what, actually, maybe my weight might end up being the average rider weight for this bike, for the sales of this bike, because, you know, they are designed for, for being more accessible in the seat height, in the weight, in the narrow seat, and I think it applies even more so to the speed, because that is really going to appeal to stumpy little legged individuals quite like myself see I can I can call you stumpy little legged individuals because I am one you know that is me I am Queen Stumpy yeah I needed them roads to really gel and understand what this bike is all about you get that beautiful scrambler aesthetic especially if you put a high-rise mudguard on it but you can also keep up with your mates on a Sunday run out to your local bike chipper. So we're in fifth, so we'll drop a few cogs because I can imagine when it is appropriate to do so we'll be trying to get around the Estrella man or Estrella lady. Of this bike is crazy. 
5,595 pound for the scrambler and not in triumph fashion all the colour options are the same price so you have the carnival red you have phantom black and then you have what this is which is their matte khaki which is kind of their like hero colour hence why we're all riding them today in this colour Oh, flowy flowy but yeah £5,595 for any of them so the bike has a 13 litre tank capacity and it weighs 179 kilograms that's 9 kilograms heavier than its speedy little bro So amazing! What an amazing day it's been on Triumph Scrambler 400X. We have taken this bike today on road, we've taken it off road. Now you guys know that I am not the best off-roader and we rode this bike on some very very loose gravel and loose shale but it performed amazingly with its 19 inch front which certainly helps. We've got you know longer suspension travel, 150 mil at the front and we do have switchable uh, ABS and traction control. We can just remove them from this bike, which isn't an option that we have on the Speed 400. Yeah, we can uh, switch off the traction on the Speed 400, but not the ABS. It's not an option, but it is on this. And I think that helps just take this bike a little bit more seriously as a scrambler and for the whole purpose why this bike is designed. Now, I don't think this bike is going to appeal to hardcore off-roaders. I really don't think that's who it's aiming to please. I think visually it looks beautiful and I think there are a lot of people in the UK kind of like that little hipster vibe. And yeah, it will certainly appeal to those guys. I really like this bike with the uh, extended higher up mudguard, which is an accessory. To me, that makes it look like a proper scrambler and I really, really like that. So you guys know that I am a five foot four individual with a 29 inch inside leg measurement. This has a seat height of 835 mil. And this is what it's been like for me today as somebody with stumpy little legs, just trying to ride. So as you can see, we've definitely got tiptoes on the floor, um, a bit more stretched than on the Speed 400. But again, if I just need to come to a stop, it's more of a bum scotch than on the 400 to get a flat foot, but it's definitely doable for somebody with my inside leg measurement for sure. Yeah, cracking bike. I'm not mad that there's not spokes on it because I think the target audience that Triumph are gonna go for are mainly gonna be road goers. It's gonna have more of a road bias than an off-road bias. Hence why, you know, we don't have any kind of adjustable suspension because that would just drive the price up and be unnecessary. But yeah, for the purpose of, you know, who this is trying to appeal to, I think they've really done a cracking job. Visually, it's beautiful. Again, oozes Triumph quality. You've got lovely, um, like, metal number boards, which just look gorgeous. You've got a lovely tank design with that stripe. And yeah, it's just been a real fun bike to ride. I've really enjoyed it. Taking on the twisties, even with that 19 inch front as opposed to a 17, sticks to the road like glue, rides like it's on rails. The Metzler Carews in this weather have been perfect. Again, they haven't stepped out of line. It's been lovely and dry. It's not quite our usual British weather, but hopefully I can take it out in the UK and you know put it through its paces with our potholes. So to summarise, a fun 400 with mainly road capability. It's definitely a bike that you could consider if you want to dabble in a little bit of green laning. You know, you're not going to turn into Billy Ball overnight and need something a bit more hardcore. For a road bike, riding this on the road, nice commanding position, a bit taller, you know, wider bars, you're upright and it just looks great i think if you're after something with a more classic retro aesthetic in a scrambler 
I don't really think you can go wrong with this bike. It's been a great ride as well. It's not all uh, fancy pants and no substance to it. it. That motor is wicked. It does pull. It pulls quite nice, like a linear amount of power through the rev range. I actually think I'd have either of these bikes in my garage. I really enjoyed the speed. It feels a bit sportier, um, but the Scrambler, it was nice upright. Visually, it looks beautiful and ticks all my boxes. And it does ride wonderfully as well. Lots of torque, lots of tractable power. You feel very stable on the road without it, you know, being a heifer. It's not heifer. It's quite a light bike that you can push around with ease. So yeah, I've enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of this bike in the comments below. I know a lot of owners, new owners, these are starting to go into their garages now. So if you've ridden it, you know, let's just broaden the pool of knowledge as to what you guys think about these bikes. I've enjoyed it. It's been great. And yeah, I think I'm going to conclude the vlog. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It always helps. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye.